Example 5. Solve 2 times t minus 7 plus t, which is 3 times the quantity t plus 1. Distribute and add combined like terms. It gives you 3t minus 14, which is 3t plus 3. So we'll subtract 3t from both sides. The 3t's drop out, the 3t's drop out, the variables drop out. You're left with negative 14, which is 3. Now, this is a false statement. No matter what you replace t by in the original equation, the false statement cannot be remedied. There are no x's in the final step. The equation has no solution. Well, that's the way the ball bounces. Solve 3x minus 2 over 9, which is 4x minus 1 over 18, plus 1 over 6 minus x minus 1 over 3. Again, you don't like fractions, do you? So multiply by the least common denominator, which is 18. 18 times 3x, 18 times 2 over 9, 18 times 4x, 18 times 1 over 18, 18 times 1 over 6, and 18x, and 18 times 1 over 3. That gives you 5x minus 4, which is uh, 54x, 72 minus 18, and uh, 2, that's 2 here, minus 6. So 5x minus 4, which is 54x minus 4. You have the same quantity on the left as on the right. There are infinitely many solutions. You could continue, you could subtract 54x on both sides, the x's drop out. You could add 4 to both sides, the constants become 0 equals 0, just like negative 4 is negative 4. Now, the, uh, this is a true statement. No matter what you replace x by, in the original equation, the true statement cannot be falsified. There are no x in the final steps. There are infinitely many solutions in the original equation. Every real number is a solution, even pi with its infinite number of digits. But let me say one more thing. Let's be very, very careful. Oh, no. Forget. I was thinking of uh, a system of two equations and two unknowns. So multiplying both sides of the original equation by the LCD is usually a better way of solving an equation with fractions. How about this one? 3x minus 2 over 9 is equal to 2x plus 5 over 12. Least common denominator 36. 3x times 36 minus 2 over 9 times 36. 2 times 36x, 5 over 12, 36. So 108x minus 8 is 72x plus 15. Add 8 to both sides, you're left with 108x. Uh, subtract 72x, you have to, the x's drop out from the right side. And then final step, divide both sides by 36, so x is 23 over 36. Example 8. At midnight, a liter, uh, 1,000 milliliters, that's a liter, of sodium chloride solution is injected into a patient at the rate of 75 uh, milliliters per hour. 700 milliliters are already in the patient's system. How much longer will it take the whole liter to be consumed? This is probably not true in IV, because 75 milliliters in an hour, that's about one milliliter, a little bit more than one milliliter per minute. Let uh, X be the time in minutes needed to finish the sodium chloride solution. The portion of the solution injected in X minutes is X minutes times one hour per 60 minutes times 74 millimeters, milliliters per hour. Note the minutes drop out, the hours drop out, you're left in milliliters. So the X minutes correspond to 5 fourth X milliliters. The units are useful, factor out 15 over 15, which is one right here, and cancel the units. 
the patient is still getting 1,000 minus 700 or 300 milliliters. That's what we still have to inject. So 5x over 4 milliliters is the 300 milliliters. Multiplied by 4 over 5, you get x, which is 4 times 60, or 4 hours. The patient will have to be patient for more hours, 4 more hours. This problem can be solved more quickly by straightforward reasoning. The purpose here was to demonstrate how algebra can be used in more complicated problems. So the purpose is not to get the answer. The purpose is to develop a method for solving uh, practical equations, applied equations, word problems. Oh, no, don't give me a word problem. I can't do it. Well, learn it this way. Follow what I'm telling you. Find a symbol for everything you need in the equation before you get into the equation. Don't jump into the equation immediately like every other darn fool does. Milan, Italy, produced a certain number of micrograms of particulate matter per cubic meter in 2004. Delhi, India, generated five times that number. Caracas, Venezuela had 20. Uh, whatever it is, MCG per cubic meter, less than Milan. The sum of the numbers of particulates of all three cities equals 10 less than five times the sum of the number of particulates for Milan and Caracas. Find the number of particulates for Milan. Well, let's get a preamble before the equation, a symbol for everything that goes into the equation. Let x be the number of particulates in Milan, let Delhi generates five times that number, so five times x, Caracas 20 less than that, so x minus 20. The sum of the first three is x plus 5x plus x, which is 7x minus 20. The sum for Milan and Caracas, 2x minus 20, 10 less than that number, 10 less than five times that number, 10 less than five times that number, is 10x minus 110. And now the equation. 7x minus 20 is 10x minus 110. Add 20 to both sides. Uh, subtract 10x from both sides. Divide by negative 3. x is equal to 30. Milan had 30 mcg per cubic meter of particulates in 2004. One more example. A telephone company used to charge a basic fee of $20 per month in addition to 10 cents per minute. Be careful. Cents and dollars. Jimmy's bill for July was $50. For how many minutes did Jimmy use the phone in July? Well, at X speed, the number of minutes used in July. We always know the answer, right? Then the cost is the basic fee plus the number of calls multiplied by the dollars per call. So the equation is 20 plus 0.1x, which is 50. So uh, subtract 20 from both sides, divide by 0.01 and 300 over 1 and is 300. So Jimmy spent 300 minutes, that means 5 hours on the phone in July. Would you say that Jimmy is a teenager? 